हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज योर फेवरेट मुर्तिद लाइव वंस अगेन एंड टुडे वी हैव आवर ब्रदर राव क्रिश्चियन यो व्हाट्स अप व्हाट्स अप आ डूइंग वेल प्रेज बी द लॉर्ड जस्ट फिनिश्ड वन लाइव स्ट्रीम लाइक 10 मिनट्स अगो एंड वन अब्दुल फ्रॉम इंडिया आई हैव वांटेड टू सी वांटेड टू चैलेंज अस दैट अकॉर्डिंग टू कुरान बाइबल इज करप्ट एफआईआई what else is no Yeah. man crazy right crazy theories yeah. uh, he even went so far in saying that at the time of muhammad the bible which muhammad had was corrupted bible and then when i showed him 1094 mm. he just ran like a dog in circles man crazy welcome so, to my life <laughs> story of my life brother yeah uh, oh man uh, but like the... that was like he was an indian guy so he mm. he we had like other kind of differences between each other as well so see you know oh well it is what it is <laughs> well it did uh, you you basically did your thing and it's on them you know to accept the truth and uh, reject falsehood but you know most muslims unfortunately they are born in this uh, in this in this uh, way they are born in in a muslim family and you know they when they the moment they are born they have been fed that islam is the truth muhammad is a, is the is the final prophet and they don't care about the rest but even if you show them the the most trustful sources and it's in front of their eyes they still say it's either daif uh, or they even will throw the quran under the bus for the sake of muhammad so it is what it is that's islam 101 yeah he basically uh, denounced uh, uh Ibn Kathir fully and I was like say that he's a liar and he went in to say he's a liar. <laughs> yeah. I made him say that almost I think if I'm not mistaken and I'll have to rewatch whether he what what exact word he said so don't count me on that but he <laughs> kind of said that yes. So yeah I was like fair enough if you want to say that then I'll throw away Ibn Kathir here there you go I threw away Ibn Kathir. Yeah. So Man, anyway, so what is the topic today, brother? I am very interested in the topic. Yeah, maybe uh, we I can share my screen if that would be possible. Oh yes, Let's sir. Let's see. Uh, share screen. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah, guys. Uh, forgive Adam Seeker. His voice is gone, so you know. Uh, maybe he will sound uh, differently. But I I asked him to go get something to drink because he just had a long uh, debate, as you just heard, with a Muslim. So I I, I think I will do the most talking today, Adam. So, oh yes, <laughs> That's the so the can, mic uh, is all yours. Break. Yeah, you can take a break in between, and uh, you know when you feel the need to jump in, just do that, bro. I mean, it's your live show. I'm not here to tell you what to do, brother. God bless your admins. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be with you, brother. Thank you for invite. uh and for the people do, who do not know uh, me and Adam Seeker we've been doing this uh for at least a couple of weeks now maybe a couple of months now I, i i can't i don't remember when when we met exactly uh the first time but uh Adam Seeker uh, god bless his ministry he's doing a lot of damage uh and as most people know Adam Seeker was a uh, and muslim for more than three decades for more than 30 years and yep. to the muslims who are watching or might be interested if if such an amazing brother can leave islam and become a true brother in christ then so can you you only have to you only have to use your brains the moment you start to think and on my last live show you all been witnessing how a urdu speaking muslim someone from pakistan who came in in the live chat and he did not know what hit him and i think after an hour after showing him a couple of contradictions in the quran and showing him that the quran is really a man made book he decided to leave islam so glory to jesus and i hope i hope keep him in your prayers guys i really hope that he will start to read the bible and i know that brother adam seeker has been uh, guiding him and he gave him the bible so he's now starting to read right adam seeker yeah he told me yeah. that he is reading the bible and uh, mm-hmm. now uh, and oh we have him on the chat welcome oh. brother he changed his name to quran ke ikhtilaf mubarak so uh, 
uh, Mubarak means blessing on the differences of Quran or contradiction of Quran. So that's his name now. <laughs> uh, that's beautiful. So that's a beautiful name, brother. God yeah. bless you. And uh, yeah, keep reading the Bible. Like I told you, start from the gospel mm-hmm. account. And uh, once you do that, uh, I'm here to help you. You can join my discord, as I told you before. Do join it rather, rather do join the discord and so that we can have one on one as well. And we can also go live whenever you feel like going live as well. Mm-hmm. So whatever yeah. you like to say, we are here to help you and guide you, brother. Exactly. And uh, again, I want to thank uh, our brother Adam Seeker here for inviting me uh, to do another collab uh, live show together. Uh, I have a lot of interesting material, new material, guys. So to the Urdu uh, person who left Islam, uh, uh, Mr. Quran, uh, I, I can't read the rest because it's Quran ke ikhtilaf mubarak means the contradiction of Quran, blessing okay. on the contradiction of Quran. Yeah. Today you're going to get shocked even more. I have such damaging new material, guys. New meat. After t- after today's live show, guys, you will stop going to Christian Prince's live show because uh, from now on you have to follow our live show. No, I'm I'm kidding, guys. I'm kidding. <laughs> but the, 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 the material that I'm going to present today, even Christian Prince never showed you before. So Hallelujah. I'm, I have I have really damaging stuff to share with you today. So if you are interested, I want you guys, I want to ask you, please, for the glory of Christ, invite as much as people as you can uh, to this live show. Uh, maybe more people will join. Admins, you have some jobs to do. Please share it on social media. Share the link, guys. We only have around 42 people still. That's you know, that's I nothing. Hope, yeah, that's nothing. Guys, come on, Christians. I'm not going to ask, uh, to tell you you're lazy, but please invite. I even started to ad- advertise on my YouTube channel, so I have no idea why people uh, still uh, not joining. But admins, keep an eye on my uh, live stream because I advertised to this uh, live show is still up. So tell the people to not wait there because there is no need to wait there. I'm not going to live stream from my side on my YouTube channel. We're only live streaming here, all right? So admins, keep an eye and tell the people to come here. Follow the link to here. All right, uh, brother, what shall uh, what shall we do? Uh, shall we start with a nice prayer? What do you think? Yes, brother, please lead us in prayer, brother. All right, all right. Again, uh, uh, brother Adam Sika, thank you for inviting me. God bless your amazing ministry. Guys, uh, give this brother some love. Subscribe, smash that like button. Uh, uh, Brother Adam Seeker, uh, uh, amazing uh, new and upcoming uh, Christian apologist and polemicist. He has a a really, a really nice way of convincing people uh, to leave Islam and come back home. So God bless him. God bless you, brother. And I want to ask everybody uh, to pray with me because without Jesus Christ, we are nothing. So pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. We pray. Lord, thank you for allowing me to do yet another live stream on short notice with our brother Adam Seeker here. God bless him. God bless his amazing ministry. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to do this together. Please bless the audience who are watching right here, right now, all the admins. Well, always doing an amazing job and the subscribers. Lord Christ, thank you so much for coming into this world to wash our wicked flesh. You cleansed our wicked flesh. We are washed and we are justified in your holy name. Your name above all names, O Lord Christ. Glory to your name. Lord, I want to ask you to keep my brother here, Adam Seeker. Myself, my wife, my baby boy, his family, his loved ones, healthy and safe. We are risking our lives. We are putting our lives on the front lines to expose this evil cult. We know that we are doing that, but we are only doing this for the truth, nothing but the truth. Please protect our families and our loved ones and everybody who is here now listening and watching. Father. I want to ask you 
Enfold us in your arms, help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you so that you can direct our words, thoughts, and actions. And please give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give in to any taqiyya, any deception, makr, deception of Satan, I mean Allah, or any lies or any 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 doubt, O oh Lord. Please help us on you in all ways. If there are Muslims, Lord, who are watching here or who will join later, please, I want to ask you, O oh Lord Christ, to shine your holy light on them, on all of us, the Muslims who might be in need and are maybe seeking for you because you claim to be Al-Haq, O oh Christ, Al-Haq, the truth. Please open their eyes so they can be saved as we are saved in your holy blood, O oh Christ. Lord, fill me and my brother here, Adam Seeker, with your Holy Spirit and loosen our tongues today and guide us so we can speak the truth, nothing but the truth, without any error or any shame because we are not ashamed about you, O oh Lord. Lord, give us wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done in your holy name, O oh Christ, O oh Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen. Amen. God we bless are you, alive, baby. baby. We are alive. <laughs> amen. And before that, brother, before we go to our topic, yeah. can you please answer our new brother? Mm -hmm. He said, do you guys pray without Vadu? Would you like to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see, uh, you see, our, our God uh, is not limited. Uh, we don't have uh, something called uh, Jibril. And uh, the Jibril, you know, he's afraid of... Uh, uh, black dogs, he's afraid of statues inside a house or uh, idols like your prophet or ex-prophet, I should say, because Muhammad used to have statues, idols in his house and dogs, and that's why Jibril was too scared to enter. So, no, you know, our God is not limited. Uh, actually, he's much more po powerful than that. He doesn't ask us to do things. He doesn't force us to do things. Uh, but uh, yeah, and, so and, and, and praying is not a show uh, mm. like in Islam. So when we pray, we go and we close our door behind us. We go and we pray to our God from a friend to a friend. Our God is basically like, he's, he's our heavenly father, you know. As you talk to your father, that's the way to talk to, to God, right? And God is not, uh, he's not an, he's not, uh, an angry, angry dude uh, like uh, Allah. Allah is an angry dude because he's Satan. Satan. Khairul Makarin. Allah is Khairul Makarin. You know. So basically, Allah puts Satan uh, into shame. That's how evil Allah is compared to, uh, to the Islamic Satan, who is actually a good guy who did not want to commit shirk. Well, Allah asking shirk from the angels in, uh, in the Quran. Anyway, that's a topic for another time. But now you will have an idea what uh, the huge difference is between our God and uh, false idols the stone idol allah who is nobody else than satan in disguise exactly and you said it right so vadu is a specific ritual to cleanse yourself mm. evolution basically so you don't need to do evolution when you go and talk to your father just like you do not need to go and talk to your father and do evolution just like when you are going to your heavenly father you don't need to be do evolution yes you need to be clean you, you shouldn't be like um, filthy and go, even though that we are all filthy rags in front of God but yes mm -hmm. uh, having a nice clothes and cleaning up is obviously good but like you can pray anytime any way however you may like to so yeah. this is our awesome God just like you are talking to your father obviously when you are talking to your father will you go in front of your father naked no you won't mm -hmm. will you go in front of your father with uh, tripping coming out of your thing no same is the case you are talking to your heavenly father so you can speak with him however you may feel like with respect but you don't need to do specific rituals so that's the answer brother god bless you and rob <laughs> mike is yours all right so guys today's topic is the islamic pregnancy uh, the islamic pregnancy guys is totally different kind of pregnancy than the pregnancy in the rest of the world <laughs> uh Good one. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, I mean, if you understand what the Islamic pregnancy is all about, you'll go crazy. And actually, that's not the, 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 the real topic that I want to talk about today. Uh, I've really 
more damaging stuff to to share with you. Basically, the Sunnah, what is being said and whatnot. Uh, today, guys, you you will get crazy. I uh, you you get shocked. The stuff that I'm going to present today in front of you on the screen, you never seen before. Uh, I myself did not see it before, actually. But you know, thanks to the Lord, the more I can create time to read more Islamic books, the Sunnah, uh, the Sira, and whatnot, all the books that are filled with hidden secrets about Islam and uh, Muhammad, what Muhammad used to teach. Uh, I myself am still getting shocked after finding these, I want to call it treasures, because I, I can use this against Islam and the fake prophet of Islam. And Unfortunately, a lot of stuff is not translated yet, as you know, right? Like uh, the Kitab al-Sitta, the sixth major book of collection of hadith. So these are not in English, but I tried for you to create my own translation, right? For the new material that I'm going to present today. So yes, you have to trust me on that. But we have Adam Seeker who can also confirm a little bit. I know he doesn't know Arabic. But he can read and he can understand what he reads. You know, he speaks Urdu, but uh, he will he can confirm. Still, he can confirm because a lot of things uh, are known to him. You know, uh, you know, basic words in Arabic and stuff. So I'm sure he can confirm. And if we have Arabic speaking people in the live chat, they can read and they can confirm. So today I have a lot of meat, guys, and I'm going to blow. The Muslims who have never seen this before away, and if you really care about the truth, you will have to leave Islam today, right? Because you will never learn about this from your scholars, from your imams, from your istas. All right, so stick with us until the end because I'm going uh, to end it with a huge bang, right? I'm going to end today's live show with a huge bang. So you have to stick with us until the end if you care about new material. That we are going to present. Do you want to add something to to what I said, uh, Adam, before we actually start? Brother, you are already on spot, and uh, yeah, my Arabic is daif. Everyone knows that. <laughs> God bless you, brother. So thank you for coming and doing this research and everything because you are going to give us some more material, and we thank you from the core of our heart that you have done this uh, amazing. Uh, study for us and to show us how to deal with these muslimin so thank you brother rob and uh, god bless you rory husky for your super chat and he said brother we have a relationship with god the father through his son our lord and savior jesus christ god, god bless you absolutely right brother rory. All right. Yeah. yes brother uh, yeah and uh brother adam ck he, he uh, had a request and i'm going to uh, you know, try to deliver. Uh, you know, he had a question. Can you remind me again, uh, brother MC, what your request was for the audience? Before we... uh, my request was, can you show how Amina, the mother of Muhammad, bore Muhammad? Mm -hmm. And because his father was obviously not there. So there could be someone else who would have done the pregnancy which bore Muhammad. So that's my question. So now mm -hmm. you did the research on that because like there are a lot of sources which talks about that Amina bore Muhammad four years after yeah. the death of Muhammad. So mm -hmm. that's a very common narrative. So mm -hmm. can we have all the sources to prove that? And plus if, he, if yes. she was, he was born four years after, then yeah. who actually was the father? Yeah. So, you, uh, guys, I hope you uh, caught what his re request is. Today, we're going to prove to you that Abdullah, again, as the Muslims claim, that's the standard narrative, and that's what they always claimed. Abdullah is the father of Muhammad. Boy, oh boy, I'm going to destroy that claim. <laughs> I'm going to put more holes that <laughs> Yasser Qadi created. I'm going to make those holes even bigger, and I'm going to add more holes on top of the standard narrative. Do you like that, uh, guys? I hope oh, like. I love it. I think the holes are already there. You're going to put it a search tube on top of the hole so that everyone can see them. <laughs> Baby, we're going to put it on a map. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. All right, all right.
Guys, I hope you're ready. I know I'm ready. I know that brother Adam Seeker is ready. Let us do this. As an introduction, guys, let me talk about the following first. Here's a hadith from Wata Malik. This is the hadith. And let me share the link. I can I think I can share links. So yes, so brother, you are my yeah. yeah, you are my uh Edmund, so you can do that. That's yep. perfect. Okay. So this is the link. I put it in the live chat. I hope it's showing. Yep. And I want you guys to read with me and take notes. Look what it says. Malik read it to me from Suhail ibn Abi Saleh, from his father, from Abu Hurairah, that Sa'd ibn Ubadah said to the Messenger of Allah, to Muhammad, and Allah is praying on him. There's nothing called bless. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is praying on Muhammad. What do you think I should do if I were to find a man? Uh oh, what? So he's asking Muhammad. A guy is asking Muhammad, "What do you think I should do if I were to find a man with my wife?" Let's say you've been working your uh, <clears throat> ass off. Just sorry, sorry for my French. You've been working for let's say sixteen hours. You come back home and you see your wife in bed with another man. <laughs> and the guy, the poor guy, you know, maybe it happened to him. You know, Allah Alam. Allah knows best. I mean, Allah knows best. So he's asking Muhammad for advice. What should I do if I find a, a man with my wife sleeping with a wife in her in my bed? In my bed. Should I leave him there until I had brought four witnesses? <laughs> poor guy, that's and the look, four witness verse. Yeah, and look what the reaction is of Muhammad. Muhammad, the hikmah, the wisdom of Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. He said what? Yes. <laughs> so even if you find your wife with a man in your bed sleeping, even if 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 uh, and accidentally the guy trips and he falls into the vagina of your wife, still you need to go outside get some uh, four witnesses, bring them with you back to house while the guy is still effing your wife so they can confirm door, those four witnesses. Yes, your wife uh, is doing zina, right? She's committing adultery with another man. This is the hikmah. This is the wisdom of the Prophet of Islam. And remember, everything that Muhammad says comes directly from Allah. According to the Quran, Everything that comes out of the mouth of Muhammad is divine revelation. So basically, Allah is the one saying yes through Jibreel, through Muhammad's mouth. You want to add something on top of this, uh, Brother Adam, before we continue? Man, I can add another hadith to that. I don't know if you have already there. Do you have yeah. a polarium stick hadith with yeah. you? Yeah, bro, I don't, I don't want to add more stuff because I have a lot of slides to show. Yeah. But, uh, you know, just, basically, just one, yeah. yeah. It's, it's very beautiful. Just mm -hmm. one, if you if you don't mind, because Muhammad mm -hmm. said, I'm going to share my screen just for yeah, a second. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, do it. No problem. Check this out. So based on this hadith, this is also there. He said, yes, bring two people. And you have to see them doing the sexual act for witness who testify that they have seen the sexual organ penetrated in her female organ mm. like a cholerium stick when enclosed in its case. So you, you, do, you don't have to see them naked on the bed. You have to see the act yeah. in this form before you can proclaim that all yeah, four you, of them has to see that. Yeah, you, so you must, you must see the, uh, uh, the private parts inside each other to, you know, yeah. Exactly. That's crazy, Sorry, brother. man. That's crazy. And this is the hikmah, guys. This is the hikmah of the prophet, brother. Right? Yep. All right, let us go back uh, to my screen if that would be possible again, bro. It's already there, brother. Oh, okay, all right. You see, guys, this is the hikma. So basically, in a nutshell, you know, you find your wife with another man. It's not enough. You need four witnesses. And as the brother showed the hadith, I mean, this is, I mean, truly. Now you must be convinced that uh, Muhammad is a true prophet, right, guys? 100%. Here is, that's... Basically, what I want to start with, but now no, let us go and start to talk about the Islamic pregnancy, right? Islamic pregnancy, and this is Tafsir uh, Tafsir Al Qurtubi, 
Tafsir al Qurtubi for chapter 65, Ayah 4. Maybe the admins want to show it. Uh, maybe they want to share the link uh, in the live chat. Again, Tafsir al Qurtubi. This is the Saudi government website for chapter 65, Ayah 4, Tafsir al Qurtubi. Look what it says here in the Arabic. The first part saying, if she doubts about pregnancy, she should wait for five or seven years, depending on the different narrations of our scholars. So a woman, a woman can be four years, five years, or even seven years pregnant in Islam. And what? The, 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 the second line says, if the child is to remain in her womb five years, he may remain for 10 years or more. And Malik narrated similar to this. I mean, the Muslim women, guys, the women in Islam are a different kind of breed. What do you want to say to about this? Uh, what do you want to add on, on top Dude, of this? Are they, the, are, are Muslim women are elephants or what? Like seven years or 10 years? Yeah, they, they are. They are like elephants. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So they'll bear a child, like 10 years old child when it comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe the child will come out with teeth. Man, this is, he'll come out and start walking, man. <laughs> yeah, he will Ten have years. teeth. He will have teeth, and you know, uh, maybe a beard like Muhammad. Man, that's crazy. Yeah. That's a crazy start. But yeah, people ten watch. years. Ten years. I mean, the, the I mean the the Muslim woman will be spit in half. Ima imagine you have a ten year old uh, boy inside your uh, womb. Well, yeah, that's Islam to you guys. Those are the Islamist scholar for to you, and they go from. They have to, they have to do this because they have to bring arguments for the so-called four-year pregnancy of Amina, the mother of Muhammad, their prophet. They need to sugarcoat this disaster. They need to come up with this kind of. <laughs> Disgusting lies and deception to deceive their uh, Muslim students, Muslim people who are in this evil cult. They have to create such nonsense to basically uh, defend the so-called four-year pregnancy of Amina after the death of Abdullah, the father of Muhammad, right? Wow. Yeah. Awesome. So four became ten now. They want to yeah. defend four. <laughs> uh, bro, and I'm going to show you even that there are some scholars who will say unlimited number. A woman in Islam can be pregnant for an unlimited amount of years. That's crazy, man. If that if 10 years is not enough, it, it, it's even more than 10 years. Unlimited number of years. I mean, maybe a 20-year-old 20 20 year uh, uh, baby will come out, you know, with a fully grown beard. Okay. Wow. I need to, I need to close my. Uh, yeah, I forgot to close my Skype, and people are calling me. Why? Why would you call us? Well, we are mid on the live show, guys. Come on, man. Anyway. Uh, all right. So, and to prove this, guys, let me give you. I'm not sure if this is going to work because it has Arabic. Oh, it's not going to work. Send it to me. I'll make a short URL. Okay. Uh, is it working on your side? I think it's. Let's let me see. see. Maybe yeah. let, you know what? Let me do tiny. URL. I got it. Yeah, yeah I got, got it. it. You got it. I'll I'll do that. You you speak. I'll make tiny URL. Okay. All right. So basically, guys. Okay, I I got it too. I think I can share it already. Yeah, here. This is the tiny URL to this page. This is Islam Q and A, guys, in the Arabic. Islam Q and A in the Arabic, and basically what the title is uh, of. The fatwa, this is the fatwa number, Rakam. Rakam as sual meaning the, the the number of the question. So this is a question from a Muslim. And he's asking about the longest time a woman can stay pregnant in Islam, right? That's what the title this title is saying in the Arabic. And here's the answer from the Sheikh on the website. And I think the, the Mufti's uh, name is Salah al Munajid, right? Salah al munajid the, the scholar who is answering the question. Look what he's saying. Praise be to Allah. First, the issue of the longest time for a woman's pregnancy is a subject of disagreement, disagreement between the scholars of law. When do they even agree? 
they do, they never agree with one another. You know, that's <laughs> because Islam is nothing but a huge confusion. Anyway, and like I said, they only want to, to create these n lies and deception, this nonsense, to cover up the disaster that uh, Muhammad supposedly stayed four years in the belly of his mother Amina, which is nothing but a lie, and we're going to destroy that claim today. And there's not much disagreement among the doctors, and, there, and there's even less dis uh, disagreement over this in the laws of personal affairs in the most of the Arab world. So this is basically uh, the translation of this page, right, that you see here. We translated this for you. As for the scholars of the Sharia, they disagreed upon the longest time, so they dis disagree upon the longest time a woman can remain pregnant in Islam in these following statements. Look. Here are some points. Look what it says. The longest time for pregnancy, the usual time, is nine months. As was said by those of Al-Tahiri Madhab, school of thought. Number two, the longest time for pregnancy, one year. As was said by Muhammad ibn Abd Hakam, al hakam And it, the view was chosen by Ibn Rushd. Two years, number three, two years. A woman can be pregnant for two years which is, is the Hanafiya Madhab school of thought. So this is the Sunni school of thought, the Hanafiya of the Hanafi Madhab, right? Two yes. years. Uh, now it's going to get even more crazy, guys. Look, the numbers are going up. One year, nine months, one year, two years, three years. <laughs> Lord of mercy. Now we are with three years. Three years, which was said by a Alayth. Ibn Sa'd. Alayf basically means in Arabic another uh, synonym for the lion, right? Or Asad. The Alayf Ibn Sa'd. So his name was Alayf Ibn Sa'd. That's according to him. Three years. And if we continue reading, number point number five. Four years, which is the uh, Shafi'i Madhab, school of thought, and also the Hanbali. So uh, basically people like uh, Fifi, Sister Farida, uh, uh, Mojab, Muhammad Hijab, the... Golden Shower Boy, uh, Ali Dawa, Ali Dawa, Muhammad Hijab, uh, uh, Ibn Fibin, the guy that you love so much, uh, and, and I know Sam loves him a lot too. All of these Salafi people, they ha these are Hanbalis. They have to believe that a woman in Islam can be pregnant up to four years because they are Hanbalis. Wow. And, and yeah. Sha Shafi and Hanbalis are one of the major, uh, you know, uh, Islamic yeah. people in Sunnah Shafi, Islam. Sunni yeah. Islam. Shafi is giant. Ham, uh, 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 Imam uh, Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Giants in Islam. They are basically, you know, the, we're, 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 to, we're talking not about jokers, guys. These are, uh, look at, look, and we will continue reading. And the more well known view out of the two views of the Malikiya, Maliki Madhab. So three of them. We have four schools, right? Three of them believe that a woman in Islam can be pregnant up to four years. That's crazy. Wow. So guys, let's say, let's say, let us, let us put it in, in an example. Let's say you are a jihadi. <laughs> you're going to go fight in the name of Muhammad. Maybe you're going to fight the Jews or whatever, the, maybe some Christians. You're going to wage war, and after four years, you come back, you find out that your wife uh, is going to have a baby. After four years, you can't dare, you don't dare to say, you, my wife, you have been sleeping around with another man because uh, you got punished for it. Can you imagine, guys? You come back after four years, and you find out that your wife is pregnant. Wow. You cannot wow. accuse her. You cannot accuse your wife of adultery with someone else. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the disaster the scholars have created for the Muslims? Can you imagine, guys, what kind of disaster they have created for the Muslims? If your wife is truly having adultery with another man, you cannot accuse her of that. Because they have to believe. Mojab, Muhammad Hijab, Ali Dawa, Shushu, Fifi, all of them, they have to believe in this. Fifi, yeah, that Fifi, all of them. That's, that's crazy, man. Let us continue, brother. Point number six, up to five years, which is the narration of Imam Malik. Number seven, six years. I mean, it's getting crazier and crazier. 
up to six year pregnancy, which is the narration of a Zuhri and Malik. Point number eight, seven years, which Rabia spoke of as the correct view, and it is also another narration from a Zuhri and Malik. Number nine, no limit. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Brother, no limit, brother. I mean, the woman is going to explode. <laughs> I mean, maybe she will, she will deliver a giant or some eight guys three three meters tall or something. That's, Man, that's. I mean, maybe he's a basketball player or something. Maybe he's a baller. I mean, the woman, the mother will be split in half. Man, anyway. And here is the source, guys. Right, by Ibn Hazm and and so on and so on. Right, and we shared we shared the link, guys, to the Islam Q and A link. Maybe the admins can provide the link for the people who just joined. You will find this. Unfortunately, uh, you know, it's uh, this is in the Arabic, but uh, we translated it for you. All the points. All right. Anyway, so guys, in a nutshell, pregnancy according to Islam Sharia, you, it starts with six months all the way to unlimited number. Look at the look at this crazy nonsense, man. What do you want to add on top of this, uh, brother Adam? Brother, this is this is absolutely miracle of Allah. You cannot <clears throat> have a doubt on that. This is absolute yeah. miracle of Allah, brother. Yeah, yeah, brother, miracle, miracle. So, guys, again, the scholars in Islam, much later after the death of Muhammad, they knew there is something. To cover up, we have to cover up the disaster of Amina. The disaster of Amina, the mother of the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad. She, according to the standard narrative, carried her son Muhammad in her belly for four years. Right? For four years. They have to come up with this kind of nonsense to sugarcoat the disaster of Amina. And someone is saying, uh, I want to do Shahada. Yeah, I'm sure you want to. You are convinced now, right? 100% convinced, brother. Yeah, scientific fact, brother. <laughs> Nader, Nader would be so proud of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Mojab, Ali Dawa, they will say, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> okay, guys. Now that, uh, you know, en enough with the fun. Let us continue. <laughs> Let us continue. I have now, now actually, now I'm going to drop. If, if this is not enough, I'm going to start to drop nuclear bombs from now on. Uh -oh. So I want you to be focused, guys. Don't, please, if you love uh, our brother Adam Seeker and if you love me, please, I want you to be focused from now on. Stay focused. Don't allow any Muslim or any Joker in the live chat to distract you because this is new material that I'm going to present now. And brother Adam Seeker, uh, I know you've seen a lot, but today, um, you, you, even you are going to get shocked. Watch. Uh -oh. Watch brother. Yeah. Here is a book. Here is a book. An Islamic book. In the, uh, sorry, guys, no translation. You have to trust my translation. This is a book that I found online. And it's written by Imam Alaeddin Al-Kasani. You, you, you are seeing it on the screen. So I, I'm translating what it says in Arabic. Here's, the, here's what the book called, right? And this is volume four. Volume four. Volume four. Now, if we go to the Arabic on page 485 of this book, we can basically find out that, for example, since we're talking about the Islamic pregnancy, look what it says here on the screen. This is the book, right, guys? This is the book. And on page 485, page 485, we can read the following. وَقَالَ الدَّحَّاك Now I'm going to tell you why the guy, the guy is called a dahak. وَقَالَ الدَّحَّاك وَضَعَتْنِ أَمِّي وَقَدْ حَمَلَتْ بِي فِي بَطْنِهَا سَنَتَيْن So he's saying that his mother, a dahak is saying, he's a giant in Islam by the way guys. A dahak is saying, my mother carried me in her belly for two years. Senatain, fi batniha senatain, for two years. So the guy was in 
the belly of his mother, according to this guy, he was in the belly of his mother for two years. <laughs> Lord have mercy. The guy was, maybe, maybe he had the teeth. Let's see. What does it mean? He's saying, when I, when I was born, when she bore me, uh, when she gave birth to me, I already had what? Teeth. Man, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is the English translation that I created for you guys. Here is the book, The Source, Volume 4 by Imam Ad-Din. Ala Ad-Din, Imam Ala Ad-Din Al-Kasani. Look what, ad dahak That's basically his nickname as ad dahak Why? He's smiling. So his, he got his nickname because he used to smile a lot. And he had thief. Look what, it say, what he said. This is my translation for the Arabic text that I just read for you. My mother carried me in her belly for two years. Take a screenshot, guys. Take a screenshot. Take a selfie. She carried him in her belly for two years. Then she gave birth to me with me having teeth. I mean, he looked like this when, he, when his mother gave birth to him. It must be a miracle of Allah, brother. Have you ever wow. came across this kind of information before, brother Adam Seeker? Oh, dude, I have never read that. But Al Kashani, I know he's a big giant, and um, he mm -hmm. is one of one of the Hanafi school of thought. He's like one of the Hanafi madhabs, major yep. major scholar. Not not a small name, guys. It's not a small name. It's like not a 19th century yeah. name. He's yeah. like right next to Ibn Kathir, like on the 12th century. So he is a major major person. Yeah. And, and the guy, now guys, you understand, and this is guy's a giant too, the hack. The guy got his nickname, at the hack means the smiler, the one who smiles, right? At the hack. And at hack, I smile. At the hack. That's his title, his nickname, at the hack. Because he looked like this when his mother gave birth to him. Uh, he, he had all his teeth, basically. When you're two years, I think you already have most of your teeth, right? Your milk teeth, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not a, a yeah. I a think doctor or uh, something, but yeah. after one year yeah. you start to have teeth, but like by two years you have like quite a few teeth. You yeah, know, quite a few teeth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at this baby. I mean, the hack would have looked like a kuchiku, a brother kuchiku. <laughs> this <laughs> <laughs> brother. This is this is this is the hikma. This is the hikma of Islam, brother. This is the wisdom. I mean, uh, the scholars of Islam are all medical science, brother. This is the truth, brother. This is, the, this is al haq brother. You have to believe in this as a Muslim. Wow. Boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy. Let us continue. If this is not already crazy enough, guys, for you, let us continue. Oh, this is not crazy enough yet? <laughs> no, 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 no. I have more. A brother, and the, look at that coochie coo. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let us continue. Uh, here is another book. These are all Arabic books, guys. Here is one. Shadad al Dahab fi Akbar min Dahab. That's the book title. By Shihab ad Din al Hambali, Volume 7. Volume 7 of this book. All right. Let us see what's inside this book. The hadith is very long. The hadith is very long. This is page 551. But I'm going to give you a summary of what is being said here. Guys, you're going to get shocked. So 18 plus. Again, 18 plus plus plus. Uh, if we have children, uh, please don't stop listening from now on. It says that there was a guy, there was a guy who put a siwak. Uh, brother, can you tell me what a siwak is? Adam Seeker, maybe I don't know Arabic. He took siwak. What is siwak in, uh, in Arabic, uh, brother? Uh, don't ask me, brother. This is a siwak. No. Don't, uh, <clears throat> this siwak? Okay. Yeah. This is this is a mis siwak, miswak. Basically, okay. what they use as. Toothbrush to beat the women with. <laughs> so the guy, <clears throat> this guy, and this is Sunnah, guys. Yeah, this is the book. 
It says the guy took a seawalk. وتركه في دبر. What Adam? What does that mean? What does Dubur. it mean? That's why I said, don't ask me, man. Dubur. Don't ask me. في <laughs> دبر. <laughs> He like put it, it in his. He put it in his behind. So he took the siwak. I kid you not. He took it and he put it in his buttocks. Yeah, the guy. I don't know what's wrong with him, but that's what it says. He put it in his behind, and after that, right after that, his his uh, behind started to hurt him, and even here his uh, you know his in, uh, intestines. Yeah, duh, and then. You know, let me actually let me give you the translation. Forget about the Arabic. Here's the translation of what is being said on the screen. This is the source of the book, page 551. Let me scroll down to prove it to you. Page 551. The hadith said the man took a stick, a siwak, and forced it in inside his buttocks. He put it in where the sun doesn't shine, brother. All right. He put it. He forced the siwak, the stick that they use as toothbrush, inside his buttocks. Later, his belly and his behind started to hurt him badly. And then, brother, can you read what it says? And then he became pregnant and gave birth to a rat. <laughs> brother, that's what it says. <laughs> that's what it says. Look. Hey, Wahanan Allah. He be, he he gave birth to an animal, and the uh, word is a jardoon. Jardoon. Which looks a like a which looks it's, like a jardoon. <laughs> yeah. So the guy gave birth to a rat. What what what? He gave birth to a rat. Khalaf jardoon. Khalaf jardoon in Arabic, right? He gave birth to a rat. Wow. Wow. Wow, and this Sunnah, brother. Ah, awesome. Well, I so have the guy never took a stick that. and he put it in, and then later he became pregnant, and later he gave birth to a rat. Yes, that's what they Muslims have to believe in. This. What can I do? Have you ever seen such, or have you ever heard of this kind of stuff before in Islam? I mean, guys, this, I'm not. Uh, this is not my book, right? Right. This is anime cartoon, I think. Beautiful, beautiful story, brother. Muslims have to believe in this. So the guy gave birth to a rat because he he put a stick in his uh, behind where the sun doesn't shine. That's what it says, and uh, it even says you know that uh, the guy died within two years because you know basically he was you know split in half after what happened to him. He gave birth to a rat. Yes, and uh, by the way, the Muslims who want to say this is false hadith, no, it's trustworthy hadith, right? Trustworthy hadith. Let us continue. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, man. Adam, what do you want to say? What do you want to uh, add? Brother, seriously, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, spinning remixes Allah already Allah! said. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why that message is there, man. Crazy, awesome. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, oh, my. And now, from now on, Brother Adam, I'm going to address your request your request was to prove that muhammad is a pro product of <clears throat> you know product of Z what zinna istibda and, not, oh. and for the people who do not know what istibda is here's 10 percent here's what it means here what it means guys a little introduction uh you know to un to tell you what uh, to un so that you understand what the word istibda means maybe adam seeker knows it but let me explain it. In the Jahiliyyah, in the Jahiliyyah, basically the pre-Islamic period, before Islam, right? Before Muhammad became a prophet, supposedly, there were two several, or basically several types, there were several types of nikah. And the most two types, or the most known types of nikah were the following. The first one was nikah al-istibda, and the second one was Nikah al Let us tell you what the first one means. Nikah al istibda. Nikah al istibda is the type of marriage, sexual intercourse, where a husband sends his wife to someone else, any man, to have sexual relationship with that person. His wife goes to another man to have sexual intercourse with that man, 
till she becomes pregnant. That's what they used to do in the pre-Islamic period. During that time, during that time or period, her husband must keep away from her. To, uh, you know, her original husband must not have sexual intercourse with her as she might get pregnant, right, from her real husband. So he has to stay away until she becomes pregnant by another man, right? Once the woman gets pregnant, the man claims fatherhood. So the, the father, the original father, who is actually not the real father, is he then can claim fatherhood of that conceived child. The purpose, why you, they used to do that, why they used to do nikah al-istibda, the purpose is behind all of this, to get a child of noble breed. So, to get someone, a, noble a man, yeah, you know, so a man sends his wife, let's say to the chief of, uh, of the tribe, uh, a wealthy guy, maybe someone who's, who has a good, uh, you know, genes, he send his wife to, to that man. His wife starts to sleep with, with him until she becomes pregnant. He kept sending his, his wife until she becomes pregnant. And then, uh, you know, she will get him uh, some good seed. Good seed. They are looking for good seed. Like, like basically the animals, uh, like, uh, you know, Ar Ar the Arabian um, uh, horses. Uh, you know, good breed. <laughs> so that's the reason behind Nikah al -Istibda. And the second one, nikah harahd, is basically uh, an orgy. That's what they used to do too. Nikah harahd is a polyndrous group marriage. Polyndry, uh, sorry if I'm butchering in English. A woman has sexual relationship with two or more men at the same time. So basically, <clears throat> yeah. The term derives from the Greek polis, many, and honor, andros, men. Right? That's where... Basically, uh, polyandry comes from. So she's sleeping with all kinds of men. And if we go to the Arabic literature, uh, the maximum number of nine men, not more than ten, nine men, right? That's crazy. That's what they used to do. I, guys, that's what the Arabic books also say. Yes. So, he, so guys, you'll understand from now on why I, I am explaining this to you. And actually, Muhammad is a product of the first one. What? Oh, it's Muhammad, the, oh. Muhammad is a product of the first one. Because, I mean, no Muslim can convince us that Muhammad stayed in the belly of his mother Amina for four years after the death of his father, Abdullah. Right? Come on. This is 2021. And let me actually prove it. Right? From now on. So pay attention to Nikah al -Istibda. That's what Muhammad is a product of, right? This first one. Here is a book. The book title is called Nuzhat al-Abab, al -Bab, sorry, Nuzhat al-Bab, Fi Ma La Yujat Fi Kitab, by Shihab al-Din Ahmad al-Tifashi, right? That's the book title. And <clears throat> let's see if I can find the PDF so people can download it. Here is the link to this book. Awesome. Here's the link. I hope it's showing in the live chat, guys. Is it showing? Yes. Okay. Again, let me uh, sure. I can see it there. Yep. Okay. So you can download the link, uh, the, the PDF version. And if you go to uh, page 16, look, this is in the Arabic page 16. I think if you open up the PDF, it's on, on the left side, uh, page 6, 5, or I think 6. But, uh, you know, the book, on, on the book itself, it's 16, right? Page 16. And look what it says here on this page, all right? It says that in some books of history, right? What about Kutub at Tarikh and Abd Allah bin Abdul Muttalib? Who is Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib, uh, brother Adam? Uh, Abdullah is the father of Muhammad bin Abdul Muttalib, means the son of Abdul Muttalib. Yeah. So the father of Muhammad, guys, focus. 
the father of Muhammad, right? The father of Muhammad, Walid the Rasul, the father of Muhammad, the, the father of the Rasul of Islam, قد تعرض لمثل هذه التجربة. Oh, oh. التجربة. Yeah, experience. <laughs> right? قبل أن يتزوج آمنة. What does that mean? Here is my translation. Here's the book title. And we explain to you what Nikah al Istibda means. Page 16. Page 16. Look what it says. Again, Nikah al Istibda is a type of Nikah, sexual intercourse in a jahiliya. Men would send their wives to strange other women, other men, so strange men, to do Nikah Istibda with them. With them. The wife, in this case, Amina. Would then sleep with a man of high statue or status, sorry, high status or no, noble, a noble until she gets pregnant. And it is mentioned, and now this part that I read for you, this part, and it is mentioned in history books that Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib, i.e., the father of Muhammad, was involved uh -oh, with such an experience before he got married with Amina. The mother of Muhammad. So, in other words, it could be possible that the father of Muhammad had more children than just Muhammad. And even Amina could have slept with many other men in such a type of nikah. Nikah al istibda. It was a common thing back in the pre Islamic period, as we told you, which Muslims call a jahiliyyah. The pre Islamic period. Do you see it? And that's the reason why Amina was pregnant, pregnant. Of four years after the death of Muhammad's father, Abdullah. Bam! Oh, wow. So even when Abdullah was alive, even when Abdullah was alive, wow. wow. So Abdullah, Abdullah was involved in such an experience. Wow, wow, wow. So Muhammad is a product of istibda. The answer is yes. Yes, yes, yes. And today we prove that to you. Wow. Wow, man, this is crazy. Wow. So basically, you are telling me when before before Muhammad Abdullah married before Abdullah married Amina, he was doing these kind of things for others because apparently he belongs to a noble family Quraysh. Yeah, so yeah, they were yeah. using Amina, him as a resource, yeah, right? And Amina did the same. Amina, yeah. uh, you know, uh, I'm 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 giving uh, you know, uh, I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt because. Uh, you know, I've I've heard many times before that actually the real father, the real father of Muhammad, you know, don't forget, Waraka ibn Nofil was a man of nobility. He was the cousin of Khadija. And I think he was he was his real father. That's what I think. But worst case scenario, worst case scenario, she could you know Muhammad could have been a product of Nikah Harrahd. More, may, uh, up to nine men sleeping with Amina and Muhammad is the product of Nikahara. That's the worst case scenario. But it's 100% sure, 100% sure that Muhammad is a product of Nikah al Istibda. Right? Nikah al Istibda. That's at least, but worst case scenario for the Muslims, Muhammad is product of Nikah al Rahd. Right? Don't forget. Don't forget that before Islam, people used to have sexual orgies around the Kaaba. They used to go naked around the Kaaba, doing tawaf around the Kaaba, circling the Kaaba, naked and having sexual orgies around the Kaaba. That's what they used to do before Islam. Right? Wow. Crazy. This is 100% sure. I mean... Uh, this is 100% sure for Muhammad. But worst case scenario, Amina used to sleep around with many men to get pregnant, right? Worst case scenario, yeah. Worst case scenario.
But I think, I personally think that uh, Waraka bin Nofal, Waraka bin Nofal, right, was the real father of Muhammad. Right? Waraka bin Nofal was the real father of Muhammad. Probably because, like, he was very, very involved with him. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Crazy, crazy stuff, right? Ooh. <laughs> Let it sink in, guys. Let it sink in. I know, I know. I know. Muhammad, a product of Istabdad. Yeah, Adam, I, I, Adam is shocked. <laughs> oh, I have a... I have a hard time digesting this thing right now uh, that you showed about his father as well, which I was pretty unaware at this moment. And and by the way, this uh, so-called new Ahmad Didad, go watch the debate where your friend Ridwan was demolished fully and you are here saying Adam was demolished. <laughs> <laughs> your guy ran away. He couldn't read 1094. After one hour of his babbling, He's just like Momo anyway. So stop babbling. Stick to the, this point that we are showing right now. Stick to this point or you will be blocked. FYI, stick to the point. Brother, carry yeah. on. Yeah, basically, uh, I wanted to keep this today. I know I can talk for hours and hours. But I wanted to keep this short but sweet. And I promised everybody to end with a bang. And this is how to destroy the... Standard narrative that Muslims always say, you know, they have to come with all, all kind of uh, sugarcoating that a woman can be uh, pregnant for four years. Like, and uh, we told you, the Hanbalis have to believe this, the Shafi'is, and so on. And so they have to believe that the Muslim women can be pregnant for at least four years. And we showed you, it's, it is get, even get crazier. There is also no limit of duration of pregnancy. So they had to invent all this kind of nonsense to sugarcoat the istibta product of his time, Muhammad, their prophet, to cover it up, you know, to make Amina's pregnancy sound legit, the four-year pregnancy of Amina, to make it sound legit, they had to invent all this kind of nonsense. Do you see it, Brother Adam? Can yep. you make that conclusion? That's why. Right? They have to because their prophet is a, a disaster. Disaster, man. Basically, Muhammad is nothing but a bastard. A bastard, right? He's a bastard. Son of a bastard. And, and by the way, this is, you guys already know the story why Muhammad is, is supposed to be said that he's four years, born four years after the death of his father, right? Because of Hamza. Yeah. Because Hamza, just FYI, for the people who does not know the whole narrative, why we are showing you this. Hamza is the son of Muhammad's grandfather. Muhammad's grandfather and Muhammad, uh, sorry, Muhammad's father were married with two women on the same day. And Hamza was supposedly four years older mm. than Muhammad in multiple Sahih Hadiths. Now, so Muhammad was born obviously then four years after because Hamza is four years older because yeah. both of them were married at the same time. But right after the marriage, uh, Abdullah had to go away for Tijara. And during that time when he was away, he died in the traveling. Mm. He died in the traveling. So now basically, Amina either had Hamal, means pregnancy, for at least four years, yep. or somebody did Istamda with istabda, Amina. Istabda, yeah. yeah. Istabda yeah. with Amina to bore Muhammad. Exactly. Or Muhammad was literally in the tummy of Amina for four years. So you take a pick. So you take pick a pick your cherry. Now. Yeah, pick your cherries, basically. Exactly. So either you <laughs> are a Muslim following <laughs> Imam Hanafi, Maliki, Hanbali, or Shafi and believe that Muhammad was literally in the tummy of Amina for four years or Amina had to go to another man to bore Muhammad. So now it's your pick. Yeah, so basically 
you know, to don't do, to not look like a fool, right? Because no <laughs> medical uh, scientists or scientists, modern scientists in 2021 would confirm a four-year pregnancy, in this case, Amina. It's a disaster. I mean, else you need to tell or say that Amina is a, is a, a female elephant. I mean, maybe maybe uh, Muhammad's mother was an elephant. Allahu alam. Four years pregnancy. When Muhammad came out of the belly of his mother, he had a big beard. At least tooth, right? Teeth. <laughs> Looking like this. That's how Muhammad looked like. At least. Like at the hag. Remember we showed you the hadith about the hag. The hag said. <laughs> Lord of mercy. That's why he got his nickname from. Right? We showed you that. The one who smiles. The smiler. The hag said. My mother carried me in her belly for two years. <laughs> and Man. then she gave birth to me. When, with me having teeth. I mean. Uh, look at this bro. Boy, oh boy. So they even oh, these liars and deceivers, they need to invent, they themselves need to invent these stories about themselves to cover up the disaster of Amina, the mother of their prophet. They have to lie about themselves to cover up the disaster. I mean, uh, the mother of Muhammad, basically a whore who used to sleep around with other men to get Muhammad. And they, you know, they have to lie about themselves, about their own mothers. The guy is lying about his own mother, man. Two years in the belly of your mother and you come out looking like this with teeth. Come on, man. And by Muslims, the way, guys. Really, Muslims, do you believe in this nonsense, Muslims? Really? Man. 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 Crazy. And uh, I was trying to add to the point uh, that even like this is such a hot topic that even the holes in the narrative guy mm -hmm. had to do a live stream on this where he's trying to explain that maybe Muhammad's grandfather was not married at the same time when Muhammad's father was married. So he mm -hmm. is trying to allude to the fact that the hadiths are wrong because Hamza's hadith about Hamza that he was four years older than Muhammad is such a sound hadith yeah. that he cannot reject that. So he's trying to elude that when they said they both got married, it does not actually mean it might mean that Abdullah married later and Abdul Mutlib married earlier. It's stupidity. Like even his his whole one and a half hour long video is stupidity in the essence. Because yeah. this is how it is written in their narrative. Exactly. exactly. And uh, and and if we look at uh, you know the the reliance of the travelers, if we look at it, it says in section nine point five, thanks to our brother uh, Lloyd, that the minimal duration of a pregnancy is six months, while the maximum is four yeah. years. Why four years? Why the year four is very no, important? No, it's it's more. It's more than that. It's more. Six months yeah. is the minimum. That, that's already yes. crazy. Six months. This uh, little but bit. Four, four yes. years minimum is a problem, but minimum mm -hmm. is not that problem. Maximum is a big problem, which is seven and affinity years. But mm -hmm. even in the reliance of the travelers, let's just go till mm -hmm. leave. Stay till point number four. Mm -hmm. Even though that Malik Imam Malik is one of the major four school of thought, so it should be five years. But even reliance of the traveler alludes to the fact. That the maximum is four years. Four years is huge problem. Is a huge problem. And when we talk about uh, 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 istabta, we can actually find these in the Encyclopedia of Islam as well. And you can yeah. find English sources. We, I will add the English sources in the description of istabta as well, yeah. because it is it is said that it's a form of intercourse. Forbidden by Prophet himself. So Prophet means Muhammad. He forbade it. Yeah. So, well, he is being the product of his tibbah. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> Consisting of a man who <laughs> fearing that he himself, he himself could not sire a robust offspring, placing his wife in the hands of a better uh, mm. person to do that. So because he knew the problems that he has faced, 
because he had to go and uh, get yeah. milk from another woman because nobody wanted him there that yeah. is why <clears throat> bb uh, halima was, he was given to halima for 2 years to give milk or oh, he was supposed to go into a village where the air is better what do you mean by village those times makka was a village as well like for the love of god what was makka what do you mean he had to go to village that there were cars running with the uh, with the pollution like it's stupid the whole narrative is stupid to begin with yeah as that bro it's it's crazy how muslims must go as far as they can the scholars of islam they they have to go far just to cover up the disaster that muhammad is a son son of istibda a product of istibda because his mother was nothing but a whore who used to sleep around with many men muhammad did not know who do his real father is guys i then myself think that it's waraqa it was waraqa right because they used to do istibda with men of you know noble men and waraqa being the cousin of khadija remember khadija was the world wealthiest man uh, woman she was the wealthiest woman her father the father of khadija was the richest man of mecca waraqa family also nobility noble right and i right. think she went to waraqa the mother of muhammad amina went to waraqa to do istibda and muhammad is the product of istibda right awesome brother yeah. awesome so but in, in four years you know how many istibda she had to go through Allah before Allah. 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 maybe <laughs> yeah like i said you know worst case scenario muhammad is a product of rahd right we showed you the other type mm-hmm. right we showed you nine people type. yeah at least nine people at least nine men right at least two so, or more men and the number the the maximum number of nine men according to the islamic books so you who who is saying what was the birth name of muhammad because muhammad is a title qasam ibn kilan <laughs> yes you know what katam means yohu katam means the uh, cursed one if i'm not mistaken brother or please correct me if i'm wrong actually i did not really investigate the meaning of i don't care what it, what his name is but certainly it's not muhammad is not his real name muhammad guys the name muhammad is a divine title it means the praised one right muhammad took that divine title he made himself equal with god right because according to the quran chapter 1 ayah to surah al fatiha ayah to alhamdulillah muhammad mm-hmm. means ha- comes from hamd hamd to be praised and according to the quran itself the only one to be praised is allah so how can muhammad be called muhammad because it's a divine title so muhammad made himself equal to his allah and we know there's nothing called allah muhammad only simply took allah he called it his god but in the meantime we know the real god of islam is nobody else than muhammad like any true cult leader who will show later his true colors right and if we do some digging we see what the quran says we do some research and we study some quranic ayahs we will understand that muhammad even called the muslims the sahaba his slaves and we did a live show about it Mm-hmm. my slaves he used to say my slaves in the quran muhammad used to call his sahaba his slaves so uh just to summarize in a in a way right now yeah. because he himself was going through all these problems he wanted to prove that he is the praised one because he was denounced by his people at that time is it is it right to assume that yeah. right so crazy man crazy yeah. and uh, this is this is what you are showing is is crazy and i thank you and i think everyone else in the live stream are very happy uh, to see that and uh, 
and all the uh, Muslimin who are in the live stream, Abduls, uh, mm -hmm. because I have a few of them who were talking left rights. Yeah. Uh, uh, but nobody is coming up live. Yeah, I see this, that this uh, Urdu uh, guy who left Islam, our new friend here in the live chat, is asking t for us to show him even more contradictions in the Quran. You want to do that, bro? Since we are here anyway, and you know. Sure, we can do that. Uh, yeah. We can do that. But like I was like this. This live stream is specially for this. Yeah. So yeah, it's your choice. Of... Either we can wrap this up now, you know, keep it short, or we can maybe take some screen. Uh, sorry, some questions, and you know, it's up to yeah. you, bro. It's your. Any question your... on this is welcome. Let's stick to this topic because I can go for the contradiction. It's very easy, you know. I can mm -hmm. we can do another live stream on that, maybe in a, in a couple of days. And I told him that he can come up live. Uh, come to my discord and I can make a live stream while he can be in the live stream mm -hmm. and we can go through like there are tons there are unbelievably uh, tons many, of many. issues mm -hmm. um, like uh, the earth is made in eight days or uh, six days yeah. uh, the world world is made in eight days or six days because like Zakir Naik has to explain hey those were overlapping days what do you mean by yeah. overlapping days Quran doesn't say that so yeah. you have to add to Quran to say no, it's not contradiction. They are overlapping days. So the mm -hmm. earth was made first or the sky was made first. Another mm -hmm. contradiction because Muhammad would say something in one day. The other day he'll forget it. So, forget, yeah. so three years later, he'll say sky first. Three years yeah. before he said earth first. So there are so many contradiction in Quran that like this is overwhelming. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and, all, and if that's not enough, even contradictions with science, contradictions, all kind of, you know, historical contradictions. It, uh, is, uh, the, this Quran, guys, the Quran is nothing but a messed up book created by a man and Muslims who don't dare to do their own homework, their own research. They have to believe in a book that is nothing but a messed up book, a contradictory book. It contradicts history. It contradicts itself. It contradicts science and so on and so on. It's, it's, it's amazing. The real miracle is, guys, the real miracle is that there are still, and they, that's what they said, 1.8 billion Muslims who believe that the Quran is a divine book. That's the miracle. That's the miracle that they believe it's oh, a divine book. Yes. Right? And just to on coming back to the same point of our discussion, you see in Quran, when we talk about Isa of Quran, we know whose mother is. We mm. know who's who's the father of uh, uh, the mother is. We know who the we, we know who the father of Moses is. We know a lot of prophets and their fathers and their children, and we know all that. Right from Quran, even though there are a lot of things are wrong in there, uh, messed messed up, the names of the fathers were left, right, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But that's not what I'm saying. Is at least they Quran tells us about these prophets and their fathers and their children and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Whereas when you look into Quran about Muhammad, you will not find anything about Muhammad in Quran. Where was he born? Yeah. Who was his father? Who was his mother? When was his born? Nothing about Muhammad is in Quran. Why? Like, think about it. A Quran which is coming on a prophet and about that prophet, you have nothing in that book. So mm -hmm. who is Muhammad? Exactly. You have to go to the extra sources. And when we look at the extra sources, even in the first seerah that is written, which is Seerah to Nabi by Ibn Ishaq, we have problems even in there. We have problems there. We have problems later. Why do we have all these problems? Because of these kind of issues. Mm. Who is Muhammad? That's a big, big question mark. Who is he? Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, you know, and we mentioned before, bro. maybe we can add on top of it since we are since you're basically requesting everybody to stay on topic, since we are talking about Muhammad and he's uh, a product of istibda, and we explain to the people what istibda is, right? Uh, a man sending his wife to sleep around with a different man, uh, and especially a man who is a noble, uh, a guy who's rich, right? With a, with a high status, to 
get pregnant from that man and when she comes back she's pregnant the, her husband can claim that uh, you know to claim the son so you know they were after good seed right maybe m one day my son grows up and he will become rich or you know so that's what they used to think it's in the pre-islamic period people were jahil people were stupid right <laughs> so that's basically but let us talk about the lineage of muhammad since we are at it anyway to, just to stay inside the topic what do you think brother sure brother sure yeah do you want to put that stuff on the screen or shall i do it what do you what's up to you brother if you want me i can do that yeah go ahead you want to go to uh, uh siratun nabi by ibn kathir yeah sure okay and i challenge guys listen carefully if there are muslims watching i challenge any sheikh here's the one million dollar challenge i challenge any sheikh any imam any ustaz to prove us wrong Prove to us, prove to us that Muhammad is from the lineage, from the bloodline of Ishmael. Can you do that? Show us proof, because that's what you always have claimed for the last 1400 years. We, today we showed you that the real father of Muhammad, we don't know who he is. He is a product of uh, Istibda. That's what we proved today. But if that's not enough, if that's not enough, we challenge you to prove to us that Muhammad comes from the blood, from the bloodline of Ishmael, Ismail, from Ishmael. Prove that to us. Do you have any proof? I challenge you to prove it to us. Show us proof. Let's go, bro. If you're ready, I'm ready. There you go, brother. Let me share my screen. This is Sirat nabi by Ibn Kathir, uh, the ninth century scholar who wrote the uh, Musaf of Quran as well. Yeah, the giant Ibn Kathir, right? One the biggest. The, yeah, one of the tafsir daddies. Uh, yep. If you can go to page. This is 51, page 51. number. This is page number fifty. Do you want to go yeah, directly to 51 first? Yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? Let us there go, go. To, immediately to the <laughs> most damaging part. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, here. Um, page 51. All right. Okay. Basically, what we can read is. Uh, maybe you want to highlight it, bro. Or you, you, you can read it. I've been talking one? for for a long time. Yeah. You, you go ahead. Read Abu Jarar al. Tabri and other Jaffer. oh Abu sorry Jafar yeah. Abu Jafar yeah. sorry my bad Al Tabri yeah. and other related that Almighty God sent a revelation that time to Armia bin Halkia telling yeah. him to go to X location to inform him that God has given him rule over the Arabs and God commanded Armia to carry with Muad bin Adnan Muad Adnan on the horse. Al Burak, so that they would not bear him any renounce, saying, For I shall draw forth from his lines a noble prophet by whom I shall seal the prophethood. So that's uh, <clears throat> about Adnan. Yeah. Uh, Maybe you go to the next page, page 15. Yeah, I think I am not reading where I should. Hold yeah. on, this is the one. This is the one. Al Sayyid Suheli. Okay, so go down, go down, this yeah. is why they are saying that attempt to tracing genealogy back before Adnan. They cannot yeah. attempt to trace any genealogy back to Adnan, number one. And also Haley said the same thing, that they cannot prove anything. Scholars who favor do not disapprove of it. The man such as Ibn Hajjaz, Al-Bukhari, and Zuhairi, and other, and Debri, and others. And then if we go down, as for Malik, God have mercy on him. He expressed disapproval when asked about someone tracing his descendant back to Adnan, back to Adnan, and commented, Whereas comes to him knowledge of that. Where did you get this knowledge? How can you do that? Mm. When he was asked about tracing back to Ishmael, he expressed similar disapproval, asking who could provide such an information. So basically, Malik is saying, Malik cannot even do go back to Adnan as well. Yeah. Right? So guys, He's not... basically, we have a problem. Maybe you can show that uh, family tree. All right. Okay. Before we continue, because this is really damaging, guys. 
We are destroying this standard narrative that Muhammad supposedly comes from the bloodline of Ishmael, which is nothing but a lie. They can't find that lineage. It stops at Adnan. And don't forget the name Adnan. And our brother here is going to put basically the family tree of the prophets. And you'll see where it uh, ends for Muhammad and his lineage. Because after Adnan, before Adnan, they don't know the names. Oh, no. And, it, it, and if you, it stops there. Sorry. Yeah. And if you read this, Malik even said that he can't even trace it back to Adnan as well. Yeah. So Malik is even a little more forward. And he said, I can't even trace it back to Adnan. Yeah. And look what it says. Uh, maybe you can highlight the part. We have found no one who knows the line between Adnan and Ishmael. Do you see it? Highlight that part, uh, brother. We have found no one. Where are you reading from? Uh, in the middle no. of the page, a little bit lower than the middle of the page. We have found okay. no one who knows the line between Adnan and Ishmael. So they don't know. They don't know these names. They have no idea, right? It stops at Adnan. So how do they claim? How do they claim that Muhammad is from the bloodline of Ishmael? And if we continue reading, it's reported that Ibn Abbas, Habr al-Ummah, the cousin of Muhammad, the ink of the Ummah himself, the scholar of Islam, the sheikh of, of sheikhs. <laughs> Ibn Abbas said, the next line, Ibn Abbas said, between Adnan and Ishmael, or Ishmael, there were 30 ancestors who are unknown. Unknown. They have no idea who these people are. They don't have the names. They have no idea. Do you see it? And I'll put the map, bro. Put the put the map on the on the screen. Yes. Watch, guys. This is what we are trying to say, basically. Watch. So this is a map. And guys, do you me... have any idea? Do you have any idea how damaging this is? Can you make it a little bit bigger, bro? Yeah, I'm doing that. Let me remove my uh, name I plate you... from there. Yeah, you can do a full screen even, right? Even bigger than this, I think, if it's possible. Yes, this is bigger. Okay, so if I zoom a little more, this is a very... Yeah. Okay. Now pay attention, uh, guys. Yeah. This see, guy... Can, yeah, you, you can point uh, the name of Muhammad there. Right? You see, there is Muhammad in, in the bottom. Mm -hmm. oh. Hold on. There's a problem on my side. Just give me a sec. Okay, so this is... Muhammad. Yeah. Uh, draw. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. Make it bigger again. It's very small. Yeah. So it's, it's not doing zoom. Sorry, my bad. So this is Muhammad. Let me draw that and then I'll do that. This is yeah, Muhammad. This, there's Muhammad. Exactly. You see the blue line? And Adnan is somewhere moved. in the middle. There in, in the this bottom. This is middle. Adnan. This is Adnan. So, and can you draw a line between Muhammad and Adnan, bro? So yeah, this is the line between Muhammad and Adnan. So this is the family tree all the way to Adnan, basically. If and, if and you go by stops, other sources. Yeah, if we go by the Islamic sources, and it stops there at Adnan. But Ishmael is all the way on the top. You see the yellow line? The yellow line that you see there being drawn by Brother Adam. This line, they don't know. It's a huge mystery. They don't have the names. They don't know. It stops at Adnan and it stops only at Adnan. Muslims, how dare you to lie to us? How dare you to lie to yourselves saying, making a false claim that Muhammad comes from the bloodline of Ishmael. It's nothing but a lie. And uh, my friend Adam Seeker, you need to, you know, when people are asking for this, this page, you need to ask money for it, bro, because this page is destroying Islam 101. <laughs> okay, let me send the Copy page. Copyrighted, brother. <laughs> yeah, I am just sending the page. There you go, guys. You can have that. It's on the Google. I just took it from the Google right now because I have it somewhere on my disk. I was not able to find it, so I just searched yeah, on the maybe, Google and maybe, took a new one. You know, let me try something, bro. Maybe I can share my screen. Sure, please. Uh, let's see. Uh, because, like, I was not able to find the high def... Uh, yeah. image that I had. No problem. 
Okay, let's see. Uh, basically, <clears throat> here's here's the same map, right? Here's the same map. You there see, you Adam Adam is on top. The first man That's that God created, right? Adam, all the way down. This is Muhammad. Let me make it bigger for the people to see. This is Muhammad. This is Adnan. This is Muhammad. So from Muhammad all the way to Adnan, they know the names. That's what basically Sira Nabawi is saying. They know all these names, but it stops here. All the other names that go back to Ishmael. Here is Ishmael. See it? Ishmael. Ishmael. The son of uh, Abraham. Right? All these people, they don't know who they are. Unknown names. Unknown names. Uh, uh, basically, all right. So you Muslims have a disaster to deal with. It stops for Adnan. So how dare you to claim that Muhammad comes from Ishmael? That's a lie. That's a lie from hell. And even your most trusted people, people like Ibn Abbas, even Omar. Can you uh, can you go to you know what? Let me try to do it. Let me do that again. I I think. Uh, Okay, let's see. Do I have it? Yeah, let me okay, go to page find... two, page fifty-two here. There you go. Yeah, guys, look again. Can I make it bigger? Yes, I can. Oh, that's my okay. image. Yeah, <laughs> I did that. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I stole it from you, bro. No <laughs> Come on, that's all yours, man. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, look, guys. Look what it says. We showed you what Ibn Abbas said, and look what it says here. We never knew anyone with information going back beyond Ma'ad Ma bin Adnan. The same Adnan. They don't know. They don't know. We never knew anyone with information going back beyond Ma'ad bin Adnan, whether relating to poetry or other knowledge. Abu Omar said that there was a group of predecessors, including Abdullah bin Mas'ud, Amr bin Maymun al-Azdi, and Muhammad bin... Kaab al qurathi who, when they recited the first from the Quran, and those after them, whom no one but God knows, the genealogists lied. Lied. They lied. Do you see how they always doing cover up, cover up? It's a disaster, guys. This is a disaster for the ummah, right? They don't know. Look, we never found, look what it says, Urwa bin Azubair say, we never found anyone who knew genealogy back past Adnan, nor past Qathan, unless they were using conjecture. So they are nothing but liars. Anyone who says that Muhammad goes back to Ishmael, he is nothing but a liar because the Blood, the bloodline stops at Adnan. Adnan is the disaster. The name Adnan. Don't forget the name Adnan, guys. Remember the name Adnan because that's where it stops for Muhammad. That's a disaster, guys. And by the way, all these names that they have uh, till Adnan, yeah. Malik actually said that I don't even believe that. Because look at the names, Hashem, okay, Abu Munaf, Kusi, Kaleb, Murad, Kaab, Loi, Ghalib, and Fahir, and Malik, and Al Nadar, Kanan, Khuzaima, Mudikhra, or something like that, Ilyas, Murad, Nazar, Muad, and Adnan. So, all of these names, like, have you ever heard of these names in any other book other than Islamic books? Crazy man. None. You you Crazy. want and and that is why that is why let me just put my screen one more time. Yeah. That is why Malik actually said Malik Malik was very truthful. He's like and they said as for Malik, God have mercy on him. He expressed disapproval when asked about someone tracing his descendant back to Adnan. So even back to Adnan, he is like it's like I don't know maybe. No, it says Adam, bro. Oh, sorry, uh, Adam. Uh, sorry, sent Adam. back to Adam, Adam. and commented. Yeah, my bad. And then it says, "Whence comes to him knowledge of that?" When he asked about tracing back to Ishmael, so the He's disaster similar. is Ishmael, right? This disaster exactly. is Ishmael. 
Ishmael, Ishmael has nothing to do with Muhammad. Muslims, stop lying. Your prophet has nothing to do with Ishmael. Ishmael lived up way north, right? Remember, Hagar, exactly. Hagar and her son, Hagar and her son Ishmael went to Egypt. His sons, the sons of Ishmael, they lived in northern Arabia, basically today's Jordan, right? Jordan, Kedar, Jordan, that area. But if we show you a map, there is at least, at least 1,200 kilometers between Kedar, Jordan, and Mecca and Medina. Muslims, your prophet has nothing to do with Abraham. Your prophet has nothing to do with Ishmael. The Kaaba was not built by Abraham and his son. Stop lying. You liars, you deceivers. You have no idea what you're talking about. Your scholars lie to you. Islamic history is nothing but a lie. And don't we always say, Brother Adam, without lies, Islam, Islam dies. dies. Without <laughs> lies, Islam dies. Bam. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Brother Rob. Yes. This was a wonderful, wonderful live stream. I think uh, our, our people have uh, enjoyed it as well as got some information. Yeah. And uh, to our brother Quran ke ikhtilaf mubarak, like I said, let's go live whenever you have time and we're going to answer all of your questions. Like I said before, I'm saying it again. Yeah. Let me know when you can go live yeah. and we will going to give you answers of everything. Okay, it's better, I think. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, guys, let, like, let us keep it short and sweet. So mm -hmm. you can download it. I myself will also download it and share it on my, my YouTube channel. You know how Muslims are. They don't like to watch very long videos. So if you care, maybe you want to cut it in some small parts, share it on YouTube, on social media. Let this go viral, guys, because today's live show, I think it's a huge, huge nuclear bomb on the faces of the Muslims. If you really, as a Muslim, are a sincere guy, if you call yourself a sincere seeker of truth as a Muslim, I advise you to leave this cult, this man-made cult, which is built on lies upon lies upon lies. And today we destroyed a lot of standard Islamic narratives. We created holes and the holes are getting bigger. Every last show that we present to you guys, it's actually helping to make those holes into cre uh, creators, black holes. Holes in the standard narratives. <laughs> All for the glory of Christ. We're here for the truth, guys. Nothing but the truth. Thank you for watching. Uh, brother Adam Seeker, thank you for inviting me, dear brother. Uh, brother, thank you Lord for coming. Savior, thank you. May our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, allow your ministry to grow. Guys, give this brother some love. Thank you for inviting me, guys. Admins, God bless you. Thank you for your hard work. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see each other again very, very soon. Amen. Thank you, Brother Rob. Thank you for coming. Thank you for hard work. Thank you for finding these holes in the narrative which are there in their own books. And thank you for giving everyone the links to download uh, these uh, books as well. We really, really appreciate your hard work on that. And uh, God bless you. God bless your ministry. Guys, Rob Christian is an inspiring person for all of us. Spread his word. Spread this video. And to any Muslim who wants to reject or denounce anything that we have shown, let us know when you want to come up. Don't send text in the description later or comments. That's just nothing. Anybody can do copy paste text. I can send articles after articles. But does that make anything true? Come up, talk, refute, refute. And that's the only thing. You can prove it. Prove it. Show us the evidence. Don't cry. Don't stop crying. Okay. Crying does not make it true. What makes it true is what's written. So do that or leave this evil cult. Do that or leave this evil cult. So with that, we'll end it. 
May the Lord bless each and every one of you. And in the end, Brother Ro uh, Rob, would you like to say anything before we close? Muslims, like we said earlier, please open their, uh, your eyes. We don't hate you. We only are sharing what your books are saying with you. Your own books that we are using against your fake man-made cult. We don't hate you, but we want you to get out of this man-made cult that is built upon lies and lies. Islam without lies, it will never survive. It would have never survived. Islam is keeping you in this, the scholars are keeping you in this cult by using scare tactics. You know, the punishment for apostasy. Without the punishment for apostasy, Islam would have died a long time ago. Because of you being scared, that is what is keeping you in this cult. Please don't be scared. Because only the truth, nothing but the truth will set you free. And, and I advise you to come back after you left Islam to come back to your Lord, my Lord, Jesus Christ. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. May our Lord and Savior bless everybody who was watching. Please share our videos, download our videos, smash the like button, and thank you again for having me, brother Adam Seeker. God bless you. God bless your loved God ones you. and your ministry, brother. Thank you. Yeshua Akbar Azim.